Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ray and Lucy Hand Digital North Studio for its exciting new chapter in Lady Ball Basketball. As we get set up, I just want to go over a couple bit of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, today's news conference will begin with Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics Danny White at the podium. Following his opening remarks, he will welcome our new leader of Lady Vol Basketball at the podium, Kim Caldwell. Coach will make opening remarks, followed by a brief Q&A with the media from the podium. Uh, just a reminder to the media, when it does come to the Q&A part, please raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you and just state your name and media affiliation prior to asking a question. After the Q&A segment, we will take uh, the podium out of the way, do some quick photos, um, and then once that's over, both Danny and Lady Vol Jules Spear will be available for comment following. Uh, without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Tennessee Vice Chancellor and Director of Athletics, Danny White. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate y'all uh, coming together today. It's a big day on Rocky Top. Uh, we're excited about our, our future and uh, understand how important these, these transitions, these pivots are in, in the history of a program. Uh, Want to thank uh, Kelly Harper, her husband John, and their family uh, for all that they did for our basketball program the last five years. And obviously, Kelly is a, a Lady Vol uh, for life and, and a former student athlete. Obviously, uh, an enormous part of why we're here uh, and why women's basketball and women's sport at large is where it is in this country is because of the legendary Pat Summit. Uh, we understand uh, the enormous responsibility that being a caretaker and a steward of this program uh, uh, has because of all that she accomplished here. And I uh, also want to thank uh, Holly Warlick and all the contributions she made as, as head coach of our program. This is only the fourth head coach of our women's basketball program we'll be in introducing today which is, is a rare thing in, in, in college athletics these days. So historic program, historic moment, and uh, gives us great excitement about our future. We had a great search committee of, of athletics leadership in our athletic administration. Uh, want to thank uh, all of those. I won't list them, but you know who you are. You are. A lot of folks put in a lot of time uh, on this search. We took it, it obviously extremely seriously, but uh, the, the time investment and the work involved was significant. Uh, our student athletes were awesome. Uh, met with our team first, as you all have heard me talk about before, it's the first thing we always do. They voted on a leadership group. We met with that group. It was very helpful to give us insight on what's going on in the program. There's a lot of great things happening in our program. We talked about and, and uh, spinning off of our chancellor's comments from earlier this year uh, as a university. Uh, we're good. We want to be great. And, and sometimes the enemy of, of great can be good. And uh, as, a, as a women's basketball program, we want to get back to competing to, for Southeastern Conference and national championships. Our student athletes have that ambition, and we're not on a three, four, five year plan. They talked about wanting to win next year, and we want to uh, make sure that we're positioning ourselves to be competitive right away. So their comments and their education for me and understanding what's going on in our, in our program and helping me understand and vet candidates was very, very helpful, where I know we've matched the very best coach for our team now in the present and, and, and certainly in the future. Um, we're looking for a coach, as we went through this, we're looking for a coach for them. And I, I feel like it's important as a committee and as an athletic director, uh, you need to be selfless in these endeavors and make sure that we're trying to find the right fit for this institution and, and for our team. Uh, we were very fast, it took us about a week, but methodical, we weren't gonna rush a decision. We cast a, a very wide net, we talked to Basically, anybody you could think of or connected to people who you could think of, candidates at all different levels all across the country, there is no stone unturned. Uh, the, the prerequisite for this search and something that I was unbending on is how is this person going to bring us back to the top? Uh, we weren't looking for a, a, a possible solution that got us back to being maybe more relevant. We, we wanted someone with an enormous upside and trajectory, and I'll tell you why I think we found that. Uh, different styles of play, we're open to all sorts of, of ways to approach the game, but obviously we're never going to hire a head coach that, that lacks integrity, strong character, someone who cares about student athletes is in coaching for the right reasons. We have that person. We wanted somebody who's competitive and confident. You will feel, you'll see we have a very competitive new coach and someone who wasn't afraid of the challenge to restore this legendary program to, to where, we all, where we all want it to be. Um, I've talked about this before in introducing coaches, uh, folks, and uh, a lot of speculation around coaching searches. We like to talk about names. Interviews do matter. In, in, in a search, 
Uh, we pay a lot of attention to what the research we do. We do a lot of research beforehand, uh, but the interviews do matter. And I think everyone on our committee would tell you there was one interview that stood out above the rest, and, and it was uh, in, in a significant way, really impactful uh, uh, interview in terms of who she is as a leader, as a person, how she presented herself, the style of play, I think is very compelling, uh, where the game is going. I think it resonates with our, our current players. I saw that, was happy to see y'all smiling when I was introducing Kim to you. Uh, but I think in, in, in terms of prospective uh, players in the future, it's, it's a compelling and exciting style of play for fans. I think uh, if you like what you're seeing in Neyland Stadium in terms of the amount of points we score, I think you're gonna like uh, what you see on, on the basketball floor uh, uh, with the offensive and defensive attacking uh, competitive style of play. Uh, we uh, will, very, in very short order, have the fastest style of basketball in, in the country. Uh, so really excited uh, about uh, Kim and uh, introducing her to you today. I think she's going to uh, not only make a, an enormous impact uh, with our current student athletes, but, could, but build a program that's distinctive and allows us to compete with some extremely uh, formidable opponents in the Southeastern Conference and get back to uh, competing uh, for, for national championships. So with that, I'm proud to, in to introduce to you the fourth head coach in Lady Vol bas basketball history, your new head coach of the Un University of Tennessee women's basketball, Kim Caldwell. What an incredible honor it is to be the head coach of the Tennessee Lady Vols. Danny White, thank you for believing in me. You have an incredible track record of selecting head coaches, and I appreciate being a part of the list. Chancellor Plowman, thank you for taking time to visit with me and listen to me and everything you do for our program and this university. Marshall and Angie, you guys have been by my side every step of the way. You've made this transition for me seamless, and I already feel like I'm at home because of you two. And all of you guys are great, but did you hear that Peyton Manning texts me? <laughs> I do really feel welcome here, uh, and I appreciate that so much. I'd like to thank Marshall University. Thank you, Christian Spears, Brad Smith, Beatrice Crane Bamford, for making Marshall feel like home. You created a loving and supporting environment for me, and Marshall will always be a very special place in my heart. I also need to thank Glenville State University, Jesse Skiles, Ike Morris, Doug Cottrell, and our, our entire loyal fan base there. You guys gave me my start. You will always be my family, and I love you. I really need to thank every single student athlete at both of those institutions who helped get me here today. I love you. Thank you for helping me live this dream that so many people want to have. It's not always fair that the coach gets the glory and the coach gets the reward for the work that the players have done. From the bottom of my heart, I love you and I appreciate you and you will always have a place with me. Mom, thank you for coming all this way. Thank you for being my cheerleader. Thank you for being my support system and my best friend. My dad would be so excited. He would be up here trying to take the microphone and probably sing the words to Rocky Top. I would not be here today if it was not for you and dad. I won the parent lottery and you're the best team mom and the Lady Vols will soon know that. To my husband, Justin, thank you for being my hype man and humbling me when I need that too. Thank you for giving up a career you were exceptional at so I could chase my dream. Not a day will go by that I don't thank you for that. I can't wait for my two older sisters who I've always looked up to, to see how amazing this place is. They're gonna be so jealous. And when I told my 96 year old grandma about the transition, her first response was, oh, I have a lot of friends in Knoxville, but I think they're all dead. <laughs> I haven't been here long and I know I have a lot of history to catch up on. Thank you, Joan Cronin for meeting me Sunday and the advice that you gave me. And trust me, as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna get back to work. The part of history that I need no catching up on is Pat Summit's legacy and how powerful the Lady Vols family is. When I say I am honored and humbled to be here, there is not a single person who has gone through this program that I could even come close to beating one-on-one. -on -one. 
It is a remarkable program. I can't wait to connect with our former players and listen to their stories, hear their history, and pass on what it means to be a Lady Ball and represent that in our program. Pat Summit changed the game of basketball, and wouldn't she love to see where the game is now? I will never be Pat Summit. Nobody can. But I will strive every day to be somebody that she would be proud of. I am so excited to get to work with this team. I got to meet them Sunday night. They're a great group with a big personality, and they are hungry to get back to the top of the SEC. We're going to play an exciting brand of basketball. We want to play fast. We want to play up-tempo. We want to be the hardest playing team in the country. And we want to give somebody, or we want to give Lady Vol Nation something very exciting to watch. I know what this job means, and I am honored to be here. I will work every day to make sure I take care of this special program and give God his glory in the process. Thank you. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. Rick Russo, WVLT Vault Network affiliate. I would venture to say passion had something to do with it, but what drove you initially to the coaching profession? And talk about the path taken to eventually lead you here to Rocky Top. When I was younger, I loved basketball, and I always wanted to play basketball as long as I could. And I was a 5'10 post player, so I learned pretty quickly in my career that it wasn't going to be a long, there was no, nothing after college in my future. And so I knew that coaching was the route I needed to take. My dad was my high school coach. He coached us from the time that we were in elementary school all the way up. And I saw his passion. I saw how hard he worked, and I wanted to be exactly like him. And so he's the reason that I got into coaching. And I was able to work with him. He was my assistant at Glenville State the entire time up until he passed away in 2021. And so I learned a lot from him. Uh, and he did a great job of teaching me how to be a leader without ever having to say a word. Cora Hall with the Knoxville News Sentinel. You mentioned you are well familiar with the history of this program. Just for you, why do you feel like you're ready to take on that challenge of the expectations of this program? The ex you want to be somewhere where the expectations are high. Um, I've had a lot of opportunities in my career to look at jobs, and I was never interested in a job that did not have high expectations, did not have a loyal fan base, did not have a hungry crowd that wanted to pay attention to what was going on. And so I think that that is something that makes this program incredibly special. And I'm gonna work very, very hard to make sure that we keep it there. Welcome Coach Casey KWAT Sports. Um, has it clicked totally that you are the head coach of Lady Vol Basketball? And if so, what was that moment where it really clicked for you? It hasn't really clicked yet. There are sometimes I have to just remind myself, right? I'm really here. I'm really seeing what I am seeing. It's an incredible opportunity. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. But no, it has not clicked yet. And I will let you know when it does. John Wilkerson, the sports animal. Welcome coach. You just did this a year ago, and I'm curious, what timeline do you have set? What do you prioritize in terms of putting a staff together and, and just starting to prepare for your first year as the head coach of the Lady Vols? Yeah, there's a lot to do. Uh, so we need to get a great staff put in place. I need to form relationships with the current players that are here. And then we need to make some additions and get in the portal and start to recruit. And so it's all hands on deck right now. Ryan Sylvia, Rivals.com. Just how much does turning around a program last year at Marshall, what does that experience give you this year trying to do it again? It's helpful. It is helpful. It's nothing that I planned. I, I was planning to be on at Marshall for quite some time, and this was not something that we, we planned to do. Um, but it does help the fact that less than a year ago I was doing a press conference, and less than a year ago I was trying to recruit the roster that we had while recruiting another team and put a staff together. And so it's, it's familiar in that sense. Jack Scherz, the, the Daily Beacon. Coach, what are your expectations just for this first year? 
We want to be the hardest playing team in the country. We want to establish our culture. We want to score a lot of points and be an exciting brand of basketball in the SEC. Um, we want to make people proud. Uh, we want to really make sure that we get back on top. Caleb Jower with the Daily Times. Coach, you mentioned this exciting brand of basketball. What does that look like night in and night out? And how do you expect that to translate into the SEC? Yeah, it looks like a lot of pressure, a lot of shots being taken, uh, playing a lot of players, trusting your players, giving them freedom, putting them in situations where they can make good choices and having a lot of athletes on the floor. But just making sure that we're going to cross half court a lot, um, but press almost nonstop, really aggressive, fun style of play. Hey, Coach, Matthew Sutsky, WTK Rock Solid Sports. Welcome to Knoxville. How different do you expect the recruiting process to be coming from Marshall now to an SEC program with a historic track record? Yeah, I mean, everyone I've text has responded to me, so that's the difference. Um, yeah, it's really nice. Um, but you just, same, same thing, right? Players are players. People that are transferring and in high school players, they're all looking for the same thing. Just different levels. They just happen to be taller um, in the SEC. John Adams, Knoxville News Sentinel. Uh, Kim, do you think your style of play can translate to the higher level, or do you think you'll need to modify it a little bit? I wouldn't be here if I didn't think we could do it here.